I suppose this sort of music can make you feel almost every emotion available to man and beast, because uh, that's its intent and that's what its, its job is in a way. It has to do that uh, to fit the visuals, to make you feel things that aren't on the screen or aren't on the game. Uh, it puts it in there for you and helps you feel the things that are, you're supposed to be feeling at any given moment in the, in the movie or the game. Welcome to Blizzard Entertainment. I'm Frank Pierce, one of Blizzard's co-founders. Today, we're gonna to be giving you a behind the scenes look at the making of World of Warcraft's newest and most exciting expansion yet, Cataclysm. Warcraft universe has been evolving ever since the release of our first real-time strategy game, Warcraft Orcs and Humans, in 1994. The Cataclysm expansion takes the idea of change to a whole new level by completely transforming the world of Azeroth. Let's meet some of the teams responsible for this new chapter in Warcraft's history. World of Warcraft development team area. In these offices, designers work on everything from developing quests to fine-tuning battleground mechanics. So for Cataclysm, the team was faced with the challenge of redesigning Azeroth. To give you some more insight, members of the team are going to talk about the game's design, programming, art, story, and of course our main villain, Deathwing. jovial and did a good job protecting the world. As in deeper Warcraft lore, uh, there are very dark, um, uh, villainous creatures called the Old Gods that were long ago chained beneath the world. And I think their kind of crazy, maddening whispers over the millennia kind of seeped up from their subterranean prisons and drove Neltharian a little crazy to the point where long ago he, uh, he lost his mind, um, ceased to be Neltharian and really became uh, Deathwing a specific conflict about um, 10,000 years in the past of, of present day Warcraft called the War of the Ancients, you know, where the you know, big demon army was invading the world. And it was at that time where the five dragon flights united uh, were meant to drive this enemy from the shores of the world and save the world, fulfill their function of protecting, uh, you know, the mortal races. Uh, and in the midst of all that, as Deathwing's madness was kind of growing in his ears, he created an artifact called the Dragon Soul, right? That he tricked his brethren into believing, well, if we combine our power as we're meant to, you know, this will be the great weapon, you know, to, to save the world. Uh, and in truth, uh, once he had all their powers put into this terrible artifact, uh, he claimed it for his own and, and essentially betrayed them in the worst moment at the 11th hour, essentially turned on the other dragon flights, decimated the blue flight, uh, forever cursed the Black Flight and just pretty much broke the family apart. And as his madness overcame him, uh, his innate kind of powers over the forces of earth and fire um, just kind of erupted uh, in his body. His gargantuan body literally split apart with like fire and magma um, in this uh, horrific you know, eruption, almost, almost as if he's like a volcano in dragon form. Um, and that day he became Deathwing, just this raging, fiery engine of destruction. Um, and one of the interesting things about um, Deathwing's visual kit is that um, while he's this gargantuan dragon, and the fact that he's kind of literally always falling apart because his rage just cannot be contained by his, his you know, physical shell, uh, they actually had to hammer into these you know, adamantine plates you know, all along his spine just to literally staple his body together. His rage was so uncontrollable, so it creates a very cool visual look for him as a villain in the series. In the latest incarnation of Deathwing, which is probably the most dangerous ever, uh, he's uh, actually stapled together with uh, Elementium, you know, which is kind of a new steel uh, we've conjured for the game that kind of channels the powers of the elements through it. You know, it's kind of a conduit for, you know, uh, whatever elemental power is aimed at it. So certainly his is 
uh, fire and, and stone, you know, so he's, he's kind of more dangerous than ever before. So why now, right? Why is Deathwing emerging, erupting into the world and, 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 and causing this cataclysmic event? Um, the answer to that um, is that at this time in the history of Azeroth, a, a long chain of events is finally reaching its fulfillment. Uh, there is this uh, a very ancient prophecy that is not often, you know, spoken of um, that speaks of kind of this, this hour of twilight, you know, the, the, the final days of the world. You know, if, if the old gods that were chained long ago had their way set in motion, you know, this chain of events that would enact, you know, their final vision to remake the world in their image, you know, this hour of twilight. Um, and what we've seen happening uh, to, to some great degree over the past number of Warcraft's cast of characters keeps growing, and the epic storyline continues to evolve with each new expansion. To shed some light on the writing process, let's talk to some of the team's storytellers. No gaming experience would be complete without the efforts of the sound department. Whether it's bringing Azeroth to life through sound effects, or enhancing the mood of a dungeon with music, this is the team responsible for Cataclysm's unforgettable audio. ravaged by war between the Human Alliance, the Orcish Horde, and both the living and the undead. A world pushed to the brink of destruction by the demonic forces of the Burning Legion and relentless harbingers of cataclysm. Yet, even in the darkest hours, hope has shined in the hearts of Azeroth's legendary champions. Time and again, their brave sacrifices have saved the world from the clutches of evil. Today, millions of players carry on this charge in the world of Warcraft, safeguarding the vast realms of Azeroth and beyond, forging bonds that transcend the game's virtual boundaries. Like Azeroth itself, the Warcraft universe is part of a constant cycle of change and growth that began over a decade ago with one game and one dream to bring to life a realm of magic and wonder that would captivate generations to come. The foundation of the Warcraft universe was set when Blizzard Entertainment invited players to Azeroth for the first time with Warcraft, Orcs and Humans in November 1994. This real-time strategy game was quickly followed by Warcraft 2, Tides of Darkness in December 1995. Orcs and humans and Tides of Darkness chronicled the Orcish Horde's rampage across Azeroth and the mighty alliance that arose to stem the brutal invasion. In 1996, Warcraft II's expansion pack, Beyond the Dark Portal, unveiled the Orcs' homeworld of Draenor, a mysterious realm that would reappear in World of Warcraft. Draenor wasn't the only glimpse of things to come. Memorable races and characters made their debut in Blizzard's early Warcraft titles and became firmly etched in the franchise's mythos. Despite limited technology, these games contained the elements that would come to define Warcraft. Multiplayer support, unique game mechanics, story-driven cutscenes, a distinct art style, captivating cinematics, and a host of units each with their own distinct personalities. Each of the early Warcraft games went on to win numerous awards, and by the release of Beyond the Dark Portal, Azeroth was truly coming into its own. 
In 1996, Blizzard began expanding the franchise with Warcraft Adventures, Lord of the Clans, an adventure game that told of Thrall's rise from slave to horde war chief and the profound impact he would have on the world of Azeroth. After a series of setbacks, this ambitious project was put on indefinite hold in 1998. But all was not lost. Thrall's story was too crucial to remain untold. To give the story the attention it deserved, Blizzard hired writer Christy Golden to adapt Thrall's tale into the Lord of the Clans novel. This tradition of fleshing out Warcraft's rich lore and remarkable characters in fiction would continue in a number of books, penned by authors such as Jeff Grubb and Richard A. Knack, and would later carry on into comics and manga. Some of this fiction would even directly tie into the events of Warcraft games. Using the bitter lessons learned from Lord of the Clans, Blizzard returned to Azeroth with Warcraft III, Reign of Chaos, in July 2002, and its expansion, The Frozen Throne, in July 2003. Warcraft III returned to the franchise's real-time strategy routes, albeit with a few twists. RPG elements such as items, leveling, and skill points transformed the game into one that defied simple genre conventions. Multiplayer support over Blizzard's online gaming service, Battle.net, also elevated Warcraft 3 to the international esports stage, while its robust map editor fostered a thriving mod community. Warcraft 3's sprawling campaign detailed the Burning Legion's invasion of Azeroth and the creation of the Undead Scourge. Through seamlessly integrated cutscenes, key characters such as Sylvanas, Illidan, and Arthas were introduced to fans for the first time. As the epic story unfolded, some of the game's heroes attained salvation, while others suffered damnation. Also present were races such as the Tauren, Night Elves, and even Murlocs. Warcraft 3's rich story and innovative gameplay brought the franchise to new heights, but Azeroth's most stunning transformation was yet to come. As players witnessed Prince Arthas's dark descent to becoming the Lich King, developers were reforging Azeroth into a massively multiplayer online role-playing game a living, breathing world where players would hold the fate of Azeroth in their own hands. After years of polishing, World of Warcraft was released in November 2004. The game was hotly anticipated prior to release, but its actual reception was beyond Blizzard's wildest dreams.